Well, welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off, and this is the second of three videos based on Wheeler's um, most excellent book on risk management. We're covering chapter three today. Uh, we're looking at the risk management life cycle, and there you go. Uh, straight from the book, you can see the uh, graphic uh, associated with this, talking about that starting point up top, resource profiling, something we've talked about in a series of videos. We called it assets before, but it's really the same thing. Um, and then moving into a risk assessment associated with threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. Luckily, you saw that in the last video where we provided that kind of risk environment for you to understand what those terms mean. We then move into the decision-making phase. Are we going to accept the risk, avoid the risk, transfer the risk, or mitigate the risk? From there, we have to document exactly what decisions and exceptions were made, move into um, uh, mitigation approaches, so we're going to figure out what controls do we need to implement to lower our risk, validate those controls for actually doing what we think they're doing, and then monitor and audit it and make sure that it doesn't change. And then you start the entire cycle all over again. And so this is our risk management life cycle. Notice there are bunches of key terms on this, resources or resource profiling. And again, in previous uh, videos, we've talked about these as assets. Talked about the sensitivity uh, that uh, uh, a particular risk has. Threats, vulnerabilities, again, risk, risk profile. Doing audits, making decisions, mitigating and making mitigation plans, putting into place controls, and then your risk exposure or risk appetite. All right, well, let's go into each of these steps. I'll start with risk pro, or I'm sorry, resource profiling. So as we're looking at resource profiling, we're going out looking at all our various assets and we're trying to gather information about those so that we can rate its sensitivity to security risk. All right. We're not looking at threats. We're not looking at vulnerabilities at this point, but we're gathering information on all of those and we're tying it back to potentially what damages could occur uh, from a security violation. So that's that first step in this model. We're going to go out and collect information on all of those assets or resources and try to profile them. And it's a, a large amount of information that you're going to have to uh, collect. So, uh, again, you're going to need some information on a general description of what assets you're talking about, what functions and features are in there. If you have information stored there, how how is that classified? Is it critical? Is it restricted? Is it public information? Is it sensitive? Um and use some, you know, standard for doing that. How critical is that to the organization? Can you lose this server? Can you lose this network device? And the rest of the, uh, 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 organization continue to do their work, uh, business processes. And then finally, are there any app, uh, regulations that apply to it? Does FERPA apply or HIPAA apply or PCI apply or FISMA? And in which case, you've got to comply with those regulations. So, again, you want to capture all of this information. And as I've talked about through these series of videos, if you're in a large organization, we're, we're talking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of assets or resources that you're going to have to collect all of this information in and in, in, in to have a complete picture of uh, your environment. Once you do that, you're going to move into risk assessment. Note that there's a difference between risk assessment and vulnerability assessment. All right. And, and that this goes back to the previous slide that says don't focus on those vulnerabilities <coughs> yet. But vulnerability assessments where you're going out, defining, identifying, and classifying security holes or vulnerabilities, weaknesses is the word we've used in a computer network or communi communications infrastructure. Risk assessment is a much bigger set of activities. You're looking at the vulnerability data. You're mapping it to threats. You're evaluating the severity given a given environment and articulating risks that may result. Okay, So very different things between risk assessment and vulnerability assessment. Risk assessment is going to be a superset, a larger collection than vulnerability. Vulnerability is actually a small part of risk assessment. Once you do that and you've made those decisions, and boy, we did that quickly, didn't we? Because we're really talking about the life cycle model. So we're now moving into that third step in the process where we're evaluating, we're making risk decisions. Um, that leads us to these kind of two rules. Uh, first of all, you can't eliminate all risk. Uh, you're not going to have enough money, people, time, space 
uh, to do that. You're not going to have enough resources, and you can't fix every vulnerability. Okay, but what you can do is be structured, systematic, uh, be thorough in evaluating those risks, and then make one of four decisions. And you've seen these before, and we're going to spend some more time uh, on those. This idea of accepting risk, avoiding risk, transferring risk, or mitigating risk. Okay, so those are going to be the four decisions uh, that you reach. And after you make those decisions, you actually move into the fourth step in the risk management lifecycle model, and that is to document. Okay, you're after. You, why did you reach that decision? What controls were considered? What's the justification? Did we do a policy exception based on a holistic look and accept the risk in a, a, a specific uh, situation? So we're either making an exception or we're accepting the risk, and that has to be approved by senior management. So it's a critical step. And a lot of organizations don't do this. They just move on. And then when new people come in, they don't understand why uh, uh, the situation is the way it is uh, and, and where you are. So once you've made that decision, let's say that you've made the decision to mitigate, that moves you to your next step. Because a lot of times that's the decision that's made. Mitigation is the most popular of those decisions, the one that's mo most likely to occur. And then what you have to do is mitigate that risk. You've got to either reduce the likelihood that it's going to occur, reduce the severity of impact, or decrease the sensitivity, harden the actual asset. All right. And again, given that it's the most common decision, this is the one that, that quite often is going to come up. And again, going back to those big three, reduce the likelihood, limit the severity, or decrease the sensitivity. All three of those are mechanisms or triggers you can pull to mitigate risk, which is the most common um, uh, risk decision. After you've done that, um, or any of the other decisions, you have to go in and validate, okay, and review the, the controls that you have in place. And there are a lot of ways of doing that. And typically, uh, especially those two are quite common, okay? Um, this idea of doing vulnerability scanning, organizations typically do that on a monthly basis, some do it more often, or penetration testing, typically done on a biannual or annual basis, and going back and doing a configuration review, and one of the more modern approaches uh, that NIST has been advocating really for almost a decade now is this idea of certification and accreditation of systems and maintaining a safe state, uh, a, a benchmark state. Um, so again, we're in, we're in step six now. Uh, we've profiled, we've assessed the risk, we've evaluated it and made a decision, we've documented it, we've gone and mitigated that risk, we've now validated uh, through these four common approaches to doing that, and now we're into monitoring and audit that last step, okay? So uh, we're, we're going back and you see some mechanisms for going in and doing that, the most common is really the last one now down there where you're um, uh, doing a predetermined you know, period of time and you're going back in to look at this. Notice you're not going to do this every single year for every single resource. Why? Because we have so many resources, so many assets. Again, in the companies, I work at two companies right now, both of them have either hundreds of thousands or millions of assets out there. Uh, and so the idea that you're going to do them every single year is it, candidly just not true. So bring it, it back around. Here's that full picture. We start off with looking at the assets, profiling those, and looking at the sensitivity. And remember, we were collecting a large amount of data on each of those different uh, resources. From there, we move into and look at threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. And we're beginning to make some to, to think about um, what are our critical risks associated with the organization. From there, we've got to make decisions. And that's that risk evaluation, step three. Do we accept it? Do we avoid it? Do we transfer or do we mitigate it? We then move into documenting where we've done an exception to policy or where we've accepted risk. From there, we move into risk mitigation, uh, most common risk decision. And again, there were three ways that we could go in and affect that. We could affect the likelihood. We could affect the severity or we could harden the assets so that we lessen the impact. Okay. And then from there, we moved into validating. We talked about four different techniques for doing that. And finally, this kind of periodic review. Although we talked about you know, very briefly a, a couple of one time events that could occur uh, that you would evaluate uh, as part of this process to make sure uh, that you're uh, staying in compliance, that you're in a band of excellence, if you will, associated with this. 
Well, this finishes up uh, the second of three videos looking at risk management life cycle. We're going to come back and actually start on this slide in the next video, but talk about the process owners and what they do uh, within uh, the risk management life cycle model. So keep on studying and I'll see you in the next video.